our project manager, Mark Abramson, at the uh, Wildlife Conservation Board funded second round of Liberty Undercrossing Improvements Project, which is phase one of the Wildlife Passage Project that is, you know, includes the more famous overpass project. But this is uh, going to be effective here. So we can work, by the way, because planting is seasonal, considered an essential activity. So this is all legal, but you can see we're doing our social distancing stuff. Like Mark is no closer than six feet to me, nor will he be. But I just asked Mark to explain the layout of the plants and just, this is just a very small area. I'm gonna pan here and you can see, you're looking up the corridor around that corner. It heads towards the Liberty Road undercrossing where the freeway goes over. But we're at the base down by what used to be Vendell Road. So Mark, how does the layout work? Like your plant selection, where things are going? Tell us about that. So basically we're emulating a creek and this is actually a bioswale that's collecting runoff from Vendell Place and slowly letting it percolate and filter before it reconnects back to the creek if there's enough flow. Mm -hmm. And so kind of in a creek environment, you have your lower or more water loving plants closer to the edges of the rocks or even within the rocks. So we have sedges and rushes and uh, so we have several types of sedges, a few types of rushes that are water lovers and that can be saturated and can be completely inundated for part of the year. And then you start to get kind of, uh, you know, your drier stuff. You get types of grasses, you get your shrub layer, which is like currants and blackberries and mugwort. And then you get your first layer of kind of tree overstory which is generally willows or alders if if it's an alder section here we're a willow section and then as you get up a little bit further from there a little higher elevation you're getting your sycamores your oak trees your bay laurel trees things that can be wet that like water but they want to put their roots deep in the soil to get to that water and not really be flooded or inundated right and then you get your your drier trees your oaks your walnuts on the upland area. Yeah, I was just and focusing on a walnut there. Yeah, There's right. So you got a walnut, walnut here. Yeah. Got a walnut over there. Two more down here. Yeah, and more. then in this particular area, this kind of flatter area, we're kind of putting back some of the uh, the valley oaks, right, which is our biggest oak, and we've got some understory of native grasses, bunch grasses. So it's kind of a a valley oak savanna type habitat, and then on the hillside. You're getting more of your coastal sage scrub type vegetation. Mm -hmm. Where you're getting your black sages, your purple sages, even white sages, um, some grasses, some yarrows lower down, oak trees, walnuts. Um, and that's basically the strategy. Now, okay, so there's a question I've been asked. Yeah. What species are the pink ones that look like flags? <laughs> the pink ones are just are, are marking all different species. Right. We have 47 different species here. Right. So, so the um, pink ones won't get any bigger. They will not get any bigger no matter how hard I try to get them to grow. Okay, so the, sorry, the pink flags will not become large pink They're flags. They're just literally there so that we can tell where the plants are because they're small when we first plant them. Mm -hmm because we're gonna spray this whole hillside with four inches of mulch. Uh -huh. And so I have to be able to go back in, figure out where the plants are in case they get buried, right. and scrape the mulch off them so that they're not getting smothered by the mulch. Right. Don't kill the baby plants Correct. before they grow. And then once the mulch is in and the plants are in their loving habitat, we will pull the, we will pull the pink flags. Right, and for everyone, the lines you're seeing are purple because this is recycled water so all, all reclaimed water right. recycled water and mm -hmm. rainwater right mm -hmm. so we've got the rainwater from the bioswales uh -huh. here and the bioswale at the freeway off ramp mm -hmm. and then we got the reclaimed water drip lines and this is highly efficient this is 0. 0.41 gallons per hour drip so very small amount of water yeah and we're just giving the plants enough water to get them started get them established get their roots deep into the ground and then we cut them off. Great, thanks Mark. My pleasure.